Number one says that Han creates a scatter plot that displays the relationship between the number of items sold, X, and the revenue, Y, in dollars. Han creates a line of best fit and finds the residual for the point 12, 1000 is 75 and the point 30, 930 is negative 40. Interpret the meaning of negative 40 in this context. So we don't care about this point. We're only looking at this one. And this is just getting to what the residuals mean. And for the residual, if a residual is negative, this means that the um, actual, that, it, that the point is below the line of best fit. And remember that the point is the actual data point and then the line of best fit is the estimate. So it really means that the actual value is lower than the predicted value. Number two, the line of best fit for a data set is y equals 1.1x plus 3.4. Find the residual for each of these coordinates. So this means that we, so we have the actual data value. What we need to do is figure out what the estimated value is. And we find the estimated value by plugging our x into this line and figuring out the y that it gives us back. And then to calculate the residual, okay, the way you do a residual is you take your actual value and then you subtract off the estimated value. And remember that your estimated value is coming from your equation versus your actual value is coming from your data. So all of these Y values here will be your actual data points. So these are the actual points. So we'll go ahead and calculate those estimated values. And so we'll do 1.1 times our X value of five plus 3.4. So we get 5.5 plus 3.4 which gives us 8.9 for our estimate. So then we'll go ahead and figure out the residual by taking 8.8 .8 and subtracting 8.9. And that gives us our residual of negative 0.1 for this one. Part B, we'll do 1.1 times 2.5, and then we'll add 3.4. So remember, we're just plugging into this equation. And so 1.1 times 2.5 is 2.75, and then we'll add the 3.4, and that gives us 6.15. So we'll take and take the actual value of 5.95, the data value, and we'll subtract off our estimate of 6.15. And that will give us a residual of negative 0.2. Part C, 1.1 times 0 plus 3.4. 1.1 times 0 is 0, plus 3.4 gives us 3.4 as our estimate. So then we'll take our actual value, 3.72, and subtract our estimate of 3.4, and that will give us our residual of 0.32. Part D, 
we'll plug in 1.5. So 1.1 1 .1 times 1 1.5 plus 3.4. So 1.1 1 .1 times 1 1.5 gives us 1.65 plus 3.4 gives us 5.05. And then we'll take our actual 5.05 and subtract off our estimate, which was also 5.05. So that will give us our residual as zero. Part E, 1.1 times negative three plus 3.4. So negative 1.1 times negative three is negative 3.3 3 plus 3.4 gives us 0.1. Our actual value was zero minus our estimate of 0.1 gives us a residual of negative 0.1. Then finally, part F, 1.1 1 .1 times negative 5 plus 3.4. So we get negative 5.5 here plus 3.4 gives us negative 2.1. Our actual value was negative 4.86. And then we'll subtract our estimate of negative 2.1. And this will give us negative 2.76 for our residual. Number three, the plots of the residuals of four different models of the same data are displayed. Which of the following represents the plot of the residuals from a model that fits the data best? Now, remember, residuals, when they match the data, so if it matches the data, then the residual is zero. And we saw that here where we had the actual and the estimate were equal, so the residual was zero. So in order for the, the data to best match, or sorry, the model to best match the data, we want the ones that are closest to a residual of zero. So this x um, axis basically where the residual is zero. So we want the data points to be closest to that. And so we see that in plot B that they're closest because we've got some up here at like two and two, three and four, and then down here at negative two. Kind of the highest here is two and the lowest is negative two. Versus here, you're going all the way down to negative four. Here, we're going above four. So B models it the best. Number four, a local car salesperson created a scatter plot to display the relationship between the car's sale price in dollars and the age of the car. The scatter plot and the line of best fit are displayed. So the data points are the actual sales prices that this car salesperson sold cars for. So for the car that is four years old, did the salesperson sell it above or below the average sale, um, the average sale price? So here is um, four, is right here, right? So here's the data point. And this one is below the line and this line would be the average sales price, right? So the average sale price is that line of best fit. And this dot here for four years is below that. So she sold it below, or he or she. For a car that's 12 years old, did the salesperson sell it for above or below asking? So here's 12, here's the data point. Um, the data point is above, so they uh, sold it 
above the average sale price. Number five, use a graphing calculator to create the line of best fit for this data. So this is a lot of data here to type in. Um, so you wanna type in all of these data points. And you can use your graphing calculator for this, or you could use a website. So I've used the graphing calculator. So just a reminder of how you do that, you click stat, and then you edit your lists, and you type it in. Now I've already typed it in, so if you need to pause the video and type your data in, that's fine. Make sure you go ahead and check that you have everything typed in correctly, because you wouldn't want your answer to be incorrect. So then we need an equation for the line of best fit, and we need to round the numbers to the nearest whole number. So after you have your data typed in, you click on stat again, but you go over to calculate, and we're doing a line. So a linear regression is what this stands for. It tells us to write a line. And then you just click enter until it calculates for you. So here's the data or for the line of best fit that it gave. And this one asked us to round to the nearest whole number for our equation. So we're going to get y equals, and then we see that this, this number is five or higher. So this is going to round up. So this is actually going to round to negative 180 for our a value. So negative 180x plus and then this number is higher than five, so this next number is gonna round up. So we're gonna get 16,938 for that. So the equation for our line of best fit is y equals negative 180x plus 16,938. So what is the slope of this line and what does it mean in this situation? So our slope, is the um, negative 180. So always the number that's attached to the variable. So this is our slope and what does it mean in this situation? So let me make this a little smaller so it'll fit here. And remember that this was talking about the degrees of outside temperature. And actually, let me get rid of this so we can see this. So this one is asking us about, it gives us the outside temperature and the gas used for heating. So this is telling us that when we have the outside temperature go up one degree, because slope is always the y over the x, and our x here is one, since this doesn't have a fraction, so the underneath number is a one. So this is saying for every one degree that the temperature rises, the gas used drops by 180 therms. So when you have your slope, again, slope, is equal to your y change over your x change. And so when we have it written as a decimal or a whole number, the bottom number is just one. So as your x's go positive one, your y's go negative 180. So as your x's go plus one, so as your temperature goes plus one, your y's go negative 180, your gas goes down. Part C, what does the line of best fit estimate the gas usage will be for 59 degrees? And so this is using our line of best fit, right? So we're going to plug it in. So we're going to do Y equals negative 180 times 59 plus 16,938. So you'll use your calculator to calculate that. And you'll end up with an estimate of 6,318. 
So for 59, it is estimating that we will get back 6,000 or that we'll use 6,318 therms of energy. Then it wants us to say, how does that compare to the actual data? So then you go find 59 in your table. And we see here that the actual data at 59 is 7,022. So how does the actual usage compare to the estimated? So the actual is 7,022 versus the estimated is 6,113. So if we subtract those, we find out that the actual um, gas used is 704 therms higher than the estimate.